Hi all, good day. Welcome to vSparks. Today I'm going to walk you through GCP's VPC network peering and we are also going to see a demo on the same. If you like this video, please subscribe to vSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. On further, we are going to discuss on these topics in this video. VPC Peering Overview What is VPC Peering? VPC Network Peering allows the workloads in different VPCs can communicate in a private IP addressing space. This communication will not use the public internet and thereby the traffic stays within the Google network. Let us take an example of this picture. In this picture, you have three VPCs and three subnets in each VPCs. In the first VPC, we have a VMA and VMB. VMA and VMB shares the same VPC that is the first VPC. So the communication between VMA and VMB is fully private and internal. Which means it uses only the private IP addresses for its communication. On the other hand, if you see VMC and VMD, the communication happens via the public internet with the help of external IP addresses of the VMs. Anybody in the open internet can see this communication this method is not secure and the organization hesitate to follow this practice. To avoid this problem, Google introduces VPC network peering where you can connect two different VPCs privately within Google network. This picture shows the connectivity between two VPC networks with the help of VPC network peering. So now VMC can communicate with VMD using the private IP addresses which is more secure than the open internet. So once VPC network pairing is done, you can terminate the connectivity to the internet from these two VPCs. So let us see what are the advantages of using pairing connections. Pairing connections has low latency more security and reduced cost for network traffic as we are not going to use the external IP addresses. The same is discussed in these three points which are network latency, network security and network cost. The next concept is importing and exporting routes. By default, when you create a peering connection between two VPCs, automatically subnet default routes are exchanged between them. Only when these routes are present, communication between two different VPCs takes place with the help of peering. You can also exchange custom routes that can be helpful in these scenarios. For example, when you use a GKE cluster, that is useful. And when you use a VPN to your on-premises, exchanging routes are pretty useful. We can see how with the help of a picture in the next slide. In this architecture diagram, you have two VPCs that is peered. You can see VPC A and VPC B. There is a VPN connectivity between VPC B and your on-premises. To your right, you can see your on-premises network. VMA can reach VMB but not the on-premises machines. If you want VMA to reach on-premises machines or the vice versa, you need to import and export the custom routes between these two VPCs. So this is what we have done at the bottom. We exchange routes so that VMA can reach the on-premises 
machines and the vice versa now let us see some of the valid and invalid vpc network pairing architectures in this architecture we are pairing vpc a with vpc b which exists in the same organization and the same project this is a valid vpc network pairing configuration here in this picture we are pairing vpc a with vpc b which exists in the same organization but in different project vpc a is in project youtube and vpc b is in project test you should take a look that the ip addressing space of this vpc and this vpc should not overlap this picture is also a valid configuration in this picture we are pairing vpc a with vpc b which exists in different organization and in different project vpc a is in organization vsparks.com and vpc b is in organization mycloud.com and both these vpcs are in different projects as well this is also a valid configuration now we will see the invalid configurations here in this architecture we have a overlapping subnet ip ranges between these two peers so this is not a valid configuration here you can see both the subnets are in the same range here the overlapping subnet ip ranges between three peers here you can see the subnet of a and subnet of c has the same ip addressing space so we cannot pair these networks together this is a wrong configuration So now it's quiz time. So please answer this quiz by clicking your right top corner of your screen. And the question is VPC pairing can be done between what? And the options are GCP VPCs, GCP VPC and on premises network. Third option is on premises networks. The answer is presented in the next slide. Before that, please evaluate yourself. the answer is option number 1 gcp vpcs we are going to peer only gcp vpcs and not the any other networks now we are going to see a demo on this vpc peering these are the things that you are going to do in this demo this is the exact architecture what we are going to do in the next couple of minutes here in this architecture we are going to peer vpc a and vpc b which exists in the same organization and the same project here my project name is youtube and my organization name is bsparks.com let us proceed step 1 we are going to log in to google cloud console and choose the respective project Just open your local browser and type console.cloud.google.com and authenticate yourself. I am logging into the console using my login email ID and the password. That's it. I have logged in to the GCP management console. So once you log in, just check your whether you have logged in to the correct user account and the project. as well as the organization so i have logged into youtube project now step 2 create a custom vpc a with subnet a and the firewall rules so we are going to create a vpc along with the subnet and then proper firewall rules just go to your navigation menu under networking you can see vpc network click vpc networks again hit create a vpc network 
give a name for your VPC in our case VPC A. Give a name for your subnet as well. In our case, it is subnet A. Choose a region for your subnet because subnets are regional based. Once the regions are chosen, enter the IP addressing space. So as per the diagram, I am entering it as 172.19.1.0/24. After a few seconds, your VPC will get created. So now your uh, VPC A network is created. Once it is created, just create your firewall rules. Click add a firewall rule. Give a name for that as well. So this name should be unique across your project. Mention the target tags. So if you are not familiar with the target tags in the firewall rule, just see the previous videos. So these target tags are used to apply multiple firewall rules to a specific instance, I mean the virtual machine. So now my firewall rules are also created in VPC A. Similarly, you create VPC B with subnet B and the firewalls. Repeat all the steps which we have followed for VPC A. The only thing is you have to change the name for this VPC and then the IP addressing space. You should choose a different IP addressing space because you cannot pair the similar IP addressing space networks together. So our first VPC starts with 172 and our second VPC starts with 192. So which means both are isolated networks. So we can pair both these things. Similarly, once the VPC B is created, create the firewall rules. So you cannot use the firewall rule of VPC A in VPC B's virtual machine. That's why we are creating separate firewall rules. So with this step 3 is over, we are going to create VMA and VMB with proper network tags in step 4. So again pick your navigation menu under compute, choose compute engine and then VM instances, click create. Give a name for your VM, so in our case our first VM is VM A which should be created in VPC A. Pick a region so that you can use VPC A for this virtual machine. Choose the machine types and then the operating system. So for time being I am choosing the operating system as CentOS 7. So under networking you choose your VPC network and then put a network tag. So in my case I am uh, mentioning the network tag as allow dash all traffic which is the all traffic firewall rules network tag. So similarly you create VMB and remember this VMB should be created in VPC dash B.
after few seconds this vm a and vm b will be up and running now step 5 we are going to create vpc network pairing connections between vpc a and vpc b so before creating connections just check whether these two vms are communicating internally that is the using its private ip addresses so the ip address of vm a is 172.19.1.2 and the ip address of vm b is 192.168.1.2 just try to ping it from the opposite side vms so vm b is not reachable from vm a and the vice versa now try to create the peer networks pick your navigation menu and the networking choose vpc networks under vpc networking choose vpc network peering click create connections for a successful communication between the vms or the between the networks you have to create two peering connections one is from A to B network. Another one is from B to A network. So at this point, I am creating pairing connection from VPC A to VPC B. So I am not going to import or export any routes here. Only the default subnet routes will be broadcasted on both the sides. So we have connected one connectivity. Similarly, you have to create. the next connectivity so the first connection is inactive so when the second connectivity from vpc b to vpc a is created the total connection will become active wait for few seconds Now you can see both the connections are active. The subnet routes at the bottom is automatically broadcasted. Now try to test the pairing connections. That is going to be our step five. Try to ping the private IP addresses of VM B from VM A and vice versa. you can see both the sides the responses are coming which means our peering connectivity is successful that's it this is the summary of this video this is what we have discussed so far in this video thank you from vsparks and thank you for watching